morning, morning. Here are once again um, on my farm and I'm um, having some kidding happening right now. Some of the animals are having kids. So as usual, Trevor Bernard here, Small Ruminants Association, and I'm looking to show you something very interesting today. Now, one of the things that I'm going to talk about today, which is something that I've mentioned from time to time in my videos, when you go to find animals and looking for animals to buy, what kind of animals should you buy? And what you should look for? I always tell people, otherwise from looking at the physical characteristics of the animal, which I have shown many times, I also recommend not buying mature animals. A lot of farmers come to me all the time telling me they want mature pregnant animals because they want to start fast. That's actually not the best way to start. You need to start with young animals, at least maybe say five, six months old, and get to understand the animals and grow with the animals. And then when you breed that animal, at least you'll see the entire process as we go along. Now, as you know, a few days ago, I did a video and you saw prolapse and what happens when an animal get prolapse. Now, I'm happy to say that this animal had one kid and she's doing fine. She has milk and she's feeding the kid and the animal is doing fine. So the procedure that we did was very successful. One of the things I always tell the farmers is that when you're buying some young animals, it's a good idea to look at the mother, look at the father and look at the kids and look at everybody. So at least you can see where the kids that you are buying, where they are coming from. You'll see the ram, you'll see the female, the mothers, and you must look at the general condition of, of the animal that is in the pen. Um, it's always good to buy animals from a farm that the animals are in good condition, healthy animals. Because those traits and, you know, those genetics, those traits and all those things will pass from animal to animal. So good genetics is very, very important also. So now we are going to look at this girl that had the prolapse and see her condition she as i said she had one kid the kid was born healthy and everything is fine um one of the persons who look after the farm what was the situation when when the kid you can describe what happened so basically what happened was you know the goat as usual when a goat giving birth you know they make that small main sound so looking around i realized that i'm seeing the kid so what I did was, first instinct was to get the scissors because I knew that the, the goat had been sewn and without that sewn um, being removed, both the goat and the kid would have died. So once I got the scissors and approached the goat, had someone help me hold her, the kid, the mouth of the kid was actually forcing in between the nylon and for every time the goat had a contraction, it kept pushing deeper and deeper into the kid's mouth. So I had to push back the kid inside as opposed to the contractions in order to cut the nylon. And once the nylon was cut, the kid came out with one push. So the fishing line that we sewed, which you saw, we did that fishing line and sew in back the prolapse and make it go back in. The kid actually came down and rest on the fishing line. So we had to quickly cut it and the kid came out almost immediately. And this is the mother now. Miss Powell will show you, you can see behind her you can take a look it's it, it looks looks to be closing up back this is actually a kid in pen this this cream color female she just had that brown kid there this morning yesterday yesterday she had that brown kid and we also had um hold on we wanted to see behind her all right, I might have to go inside the pen. Just lift up our tail. She's trying to protect us for herself because you know, animals, goats use their tail to fan off flies. And because her own here is very delicate, she's fanning off the flies. But you see if it, it's kind of closed up here now. And um, you know, it, it's not looking too bad. We put a little ectoline to keep away the flies and to make sure we have to watch it. But one of the things is, this is one of the young kids. This was born yesterday. 
nice little female kid. So this is the mother. She has a lot of milk. You can see her udder, and she will be producing a lot of kid to grow, a lot of milk to grow up this kid. Now, we were talking about selection of animals. No, this mother that had this kid successful. Where is our kid? This one here. Two kids. One. One kid. Two. Two? One. one kid. No, the black one. The black one. What? Which is her kid? So this is the kid. Very nice kid, eh? Very very nice. A female too. Mm. Yeah, a nice female kid. So, looks just like the mother. If you see the, the white and the black in the side, she looks just like the mother. Now, this mother, she probably looks like maybe a two year old. Yeah, she's probably, you know, like two years old. Now, this is the kind of mothers that a lot of farmers like buying. A, 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 an animal that has been bred one time already and has a kid on them a lot of farmers will come and want to buy this kid this is this this mother now farmers this is exactly what you must not do an animal like this that had prolapse you should call this animal this animal if you breed this animal back again this animal more than likely is going to have the same problem and it might even be worse i have seen where this prolapse thing happens where the entire thing comes right out of the animal. Much, much more than what we saw the other day with this animal. And she will not, it will not be advisable to breed this animal back. So you have to cull this animal. These are the kind of things that you have to look for when you are buying animals. And that's why you don't go and buy mature animals. Because most times, as some farmers sell cull animals, animals that don't make any sense putting in a breeding program. Sometimes the animals could be not producing enough milk, not a good mother, don't want to feed the kids. The animals could have a situation like this or have some other defect. I've seen animals that don't have any teeth in the mouth, you know, overbite, bad, the, the back legs are not good. You know, many, many different things can happen. So it is important. It's also a good idea to always carry somebody who has experience when you're going to buy animals. So, Miss Powell, we had a very successful, um, you know, Miss Powell and I and my assistant, we had a successful time with this animal. I think we saved the kid and saved the, um, the animal's life. And she has a lovely kid on her now. Now, it might be questionable now, would we want to keep the kid in our operation. It is possible because these kind of things, because the weak muscle, this is, could be genetically linked. More than likely it's genetically linked. Will the kid have that bad genetics or that bad genes in there? It is possible. Now, we won't know unless you breed back this kid and see what happens because sometimes you know, the animal will take the traits of the father and not necessarily the mother. So you could take a chance and breed back this animal and the kid will be a good producer and be a good animal, but there's a risk involved. And that's one of the reasons why it's always a good idea to see who the mother is and who the father is and look at all of that to make your decisions when you're buying animals. Some farmers are buying animals very expensive. If you are paying big money for an animal, you have to know where the animal is coming from. Make sure you know the parents of those animals when you are spending big money. Um, so, culling. Culling is very important in your operation. You have to cull bad animals. Butcher them or send them to a butcher. Both male and females. Culling is very, very important in your operation. I know also in rabbit rearing, it is so important in rabbit rearing, in all animal rearing, you have to practice culling. I know of farmers who might have, you know, 100, 150, maybe 200 animals in their pen. And when you walk around and you look at all the animals, big herd, they have used the wrong ram, they have used rams that have 
defects, you know, bad hack and, you know, many different faults the ram can have on the animal. And he throws all of those faults in his herd. Because always remember, half of your herd is half of the ram. All of those kids are going to have half the genetics of the ram that you put on them. That's why you must always put a very, very good quality ram on your herd. Don't use an inferior ram. Always spend the money and buy a good ram when you breed in your herd. Because the bad genetics will spread. People also ask me about inbreeding. Inbreeding or line breeding can be good in some instances. But always remember when you line breed, if the animal, the father, has some bad genetics, those bad genetics will multiply itself. So for example, if you had a ram and his foot was bent here or he's not standing properly on his posture and you breed him to some females, that bad posture can multiply itself when you inbreed. So it is important that you do proper selection of your ram. Your ram is the most important thing on your herd. Please pay attention to that. I also like to tell people it is best to put to use a purebred ram. In, 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 you know, it, if you can afford it, it's best to always use a purebred ram. Because with a purebred ram, you, are going to, you know exactly, you can predict exactly what you are going to get with those animals when they're born. When you use a crossbreed animals, you are going to get genetics from any side of wherever that genetics is. And um, I find that the native bloodline is very strong and a lot of times this is what is pushed in, in, in your herd. So purebred rams are usually the best way to go. All right, so I wanted to show you this. I wanted to show you the results of what happened here. We're still monitoring her and the kid is looking very healthy and everything is working out fine. So we are here in the kidding season. Another thing you have to watch when you have this kidding season, you have to pay attention to the animals. Make sure you isolate them when they are going to kid down. Watch them and if they need help, you help them. The kids are the most important thing of your operation because right now when these kids are born, it is what increases your number and that's where your profit is going to come from. Thanks so much for watching and um, I'm going to finish looking at the herd here now and see what's happening here. We're supposed to have some more kids born in on the farm here now and continue to subscribe to my channel. Thumbs up. All right.